guys, welcome back to our channel. We're the Garza Twins. I'm Britta. And I'm Carly. If you like beauty reviews, get ready with me, small business chats, and lifestyle favorites, subscribe down below because we think you'll like our content. Today we're doing our March favorites. We got some good stuff, so let's get into it. Okay, here's a hair care favor I've been using all month. It's the Kenra Thickening Mousse. I got this because my hair just always feels really flat. I do think it is becoming a little bit healthier since using my like rosemary oil, but I just wanted it to be more voluminous, especially because I'm doing the like Velcro roller thing, and sometimes I feel like if my hair feels fine and flat, the Velcro rollers kind of look it doesn't do anything. So I got this and I just add this to damp hair. So before I air dry, like as soon as I take it out of the towel, first I'll go in with like my detangler, then I'll add this and I'll do it mostly like mid to end and then a little at the root. And then I go in with like my smoothing serum. Um, and then I just let it air dry and it is a little bit hard to find the right amount of product Like I feel like if you use too much of this it can make your hair a little crunchy and then like have it kind of Like not clumped together. So it doesn't feel sticky at all I don't want to make it sound like but it just is a little bit harder to manage and then if you use too little It just doesn't really have any effect so to find the sweet spot It takes a little trial and error, but I feel like I found it now where it does just add volume to my hair um, but it doesn't make it crunchy and I can still brush through my hair perfectly fine but I do think it just looks a little bit more voluminous which is what I wanted and I love the way this smells I don't know if all Kendra products smell like this but their fragrance is so nice and I feel like this will last me a while because I only use it when I wash my hair the can is pretty big um, so yeah I've really been enjoying this if you have fine hair I definitely recommend this especially if you just air dry your hair because I have noticed it kind of acts as like a typical mousse and my hair looks way curlier and wavier when I use this so I could also just leave it like that um, and not do the velcro roller thing so if you are kind of looking for something that just makes it even easier to like air dry your hair this would be good too I've wanted to try the serum from Beauty Pie since they launched it and they kindly sent us a PR package and it's the Youth Bomb 360 Radiant Concentrate. It says with exclusive bio G elastic complex, helps to visibly firm, tighten, and soften fine lines and wrinkles, boost radiance, and enhance, enhance luminosity. I also saw that um I actually think this is great they do this now. They mark which products are pregnancy safe um, mm -hmm. on their website, and this was one of them. And I feel like for anyone who can't use Retin-A when they're pregnant, this would be like a really good alternative. Yeah. Because, so it is way too early to tell. Like, I've used it for like a, a little over a week. I'm kind of cheating putting it in this video, but I just don't really like it. But it's too early to tell if it's doing much. But I have high hopes. If you look at the reviews of this, it's like, insane reviews people saying that it like made their skin so smooth like got a lot of people say got rid of higher pigmentation which i don't no. yeah i don't have but i love the texture and i love how well it wears with other skincare or with makeup like it's a very very thin like water like texture it kind of smells like an aha baha product where it, um i don't know like fruit Sour? extracts oh yeah okay. Um, but the smell dissipates really quickly and I love that I can like layer this under vitamin C in the morning and I can layer under moisturizer at night. I have been using it day and night and I even had like some irritation, like some redness and I felt like in the morning my skin looked a lot better. And I also love the glow this gives. Um, again, like it looks so pretty under makeup. I do this with my vitamin C and then an SPF, but I did use this one day, um, just on its own when I wasn't really leaving the house and like all day my skin looked so glowy and pretty but it doesn't like feel emollient so I don't know how it leaves like a glow when it doesn't feel emollient but that's why I feel like it works for so many skin types and again too early to tell if it's like doing anything substantial yet but it's hard for me to find a serum I like the texture even mm -hmm. like I just don't like a lot of them and so just that alone and the packaging's really nice. Cute. The auto dropper actually works, which is hard to find. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I'm really impressed with this, but I will keep you guys updated for sure, like seeing how the results are. Okay, another skincare favorite of the month is the Ren Smooth Prep and Plump Essence. I talked about this in a weekly fave, so I won't stay here long, but it's basically a very hydrating serum that has like glycerin and niacinamide. So I apply this right after I wash my face to slightly damp skin because it has um, all of those 
humectants in it and I just pat it into my skin and it just like immediately plumps up the skin it's the perfect name and I think smooth is referring to the niacinamide and so I like wearing this even under my retin-a sometimes when my skin is feeling extra air irritated because I feel like for me at least niacinamide really does help strengthen the skin barrier so if I put this under my retin-a it does really help to like basically lessen the chance of irritation but I've been using this mainly at night like under my moisturizer like I said or my retin-a and it just really does a great job of hydrating and plumping the skin and I really like it it's like a simple essence and that's what I'm always looking for like something that's simple and effective that won't compromise my skin barrier just plumps and hydrates love it Another Beauty Pie product, which again, have only used this a little over a week, but I'm cheating and putting it in here because I really love it. Yeah. It's the Triple Hyaluronic Acid Eye Serum. Again, I've been using this morning and night, and I just never really find eye creams to work well with like other skincare or makeup. I find it so hard, and this has such a nice light fluid, like not like fluid, but like very thin texture once it's blended out, but it feels really moisturizing. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed a difference. My eyes have been so dark, like permanently. <laughs> for the past few months and I looked in the mirror earlier and I feel like it's for some reason starting in the outside moving inward like it's taken away some of the darkness on the outside and I've really only used it a little over a week but I have used it morning and night I mean it has really good actives in here that we've heard of yeah so I really love it it's so good the texture is really unmatched if you're looking for something lightweight you can wear under makeup like concealer this is it mm -hmm. okay next up is the Zara orchid fragrance i did a reel and a tiktok on this but i bought a pack of two perfumes from zara orchid and gardenia because the pack was like 14 dollars so each of these were seven dollars you get one ounce and gardenia is a dupe for ysl black opium which i knew i liked and people were saying orchid was a dupe for victoria's secret bombshell and that's when i knew i had to have it and to me it is a dupe for that fragrance we were even in victoria's secret or we went to Pink to get our mom something for Christmas back in December. And I was like, oh, let's go smell bombshell. Because, like, that was our signature scent in high school. And this just brings me back. And it's just a really nice, like, fresh, fruity, bright scent that I feel like is just so suitable for every day. And I've been reaching for this a lot as, like, spring is technically here, even though it's pouring rain outside. And it's just... It's nice to like have back in my collection, especially at an affordable price point. So they do sell it individually, I think for like $11, but if you can find the set, I recommend that for sure. I also saw it in stores. Okay, I bought these Birkenstock clogs a while ago, but I haven't had a chance to wear them because of the rain until this month. And I love them. <clears throat> they are this like pale sort of ivory, but I did spray them with protectant. So far so good, but I'm, I know they're gonna get dirty and I'll just figure out a way to clean them. I saw that Birkenstock sells a brush that you can buy to like clean them better. Um, but they're so comfortable, not like I was surprised, but I feel like with my sandals, I've always had to break them in. But these, like I put them on and because they're a little bit wider, I think, than my sandals, like there's like no breaking in point. They're just so comfy, so soft, like the softest suede ever amazing shoes i will link them down below they're coming back and in stock like off and on i keep getting alerts so you'll just have to watch out for them okay i got this hair clip on ulta it's by the brand kitsch which i know they make good hair accessories and they it came in a blonde blonde and a brunette color this is supposed to be the blonde it's really just a light pink but i really like how like heavy duty the clamp is like a really yeah, the one clip that I have is from Kitsch too. Oh really? It really clamps onto the hair and I was looking for something that was medium sized. I felt like I had a small claw clip and then a bigger one from Amazon but nothing in between and this fits the mold for me. I feel like it just does a good job of holding my hair where I want it and holding it in place. So I think I'm actually going to pick up the brown one too um, during my whenever I place an Alta order because they're $10 and I feel like it's hard to find like good quality clips. Yeah all of them were breaking that I got from like target and stuff until i bought that kitsch one yeah that have like minimal patterns like i like that this is just marbled it doesn't have like anything crazy mm -hmm. going on so they have it in brown too okay sorry one more thing we wanted to mention was the nutribullet carly's boyfriend james got one for christmas and we have been using this so much i'm sure you guys already have one so you're rolling your eyes but i make the baked oats in there so you blend like well i can leave a recipe down below but you basically blend like oats banana 
Uh, we use applesauce in place of an egg, some milk, and it just blends everything up and then you bake it in a ramekin. I've been making a sauce for like our tacos in there. It's we made just, a pasta sauce. We made a pasta sauce. It's so much better than the blender. The blender is just like so many pieces. It's so bulky. It's hard to clean. This is so easy to clean. Life changing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and our book favorites of the month, mine is The Idea of You by Robin Lee. So this book has like blown up and I saw that people thought it was Harry Styles fanfic, but it's not actually. She said that she just wrote it, um, like it, not necessarily with Harry Styles in mind, but basically it follows Sloane Marchand and she's like a 40 year old art gallery owner and mom and she takes her daughter to see a boy band and ends up meeting all the boy band members backstage and she sort of like eyes this guy named Hayes and he's 19 years old and in the band and they basically start this love affair and it goes on and on and on for like months and months and months and as you can tell it probably becomes deeper than just like hooking up and it the book really explores it's very long and it explores um like women being like shame for like being with younger men it explores um, her talking about how like women are really only valued for their looks and like as you get older that essentially goes away so like it makes you feel like what's left of you and she's like a business owner and sort of like at times like even exploits that like oh well I'm still like looking good at 40 so I'm gonna like use this to sell art but it's it's just such a like a women empowering book um she's a really good female character there were times where I was like I felt she was a little like pretentious and stuck up I will say <laughs> but I really liked her overall and how they described like her clothes and how she like just put herself together I like I cannot wait for the movie that's going it's going to happen because I can't wait to see what they dress her in because she like wore designer clothes the whole book and then I really loved Hayes I thought he was I don't know such a good example of like don't judge a book by its cover like you know he's in a boy band and that might sound just like you know you just judge him for that but he ends up being like really deep and emotional and emotionally intelligent and I feel like a really mature character for being so young and I just loved them together I felt like they so easily clicked and I could see why they were together. I had to give it four stars instead of five because it was a non-ending. It ended so abruptly. I They better change it for the movie because I was like, what? Like, this wasn't even an ending. Like, nothing was resolved. I couldn't get past it. I couldn't get past it. So I had to give it four stars instead of five. But if it was, like, out of ten, I would give it, like, an 8.9 because it was really incredible. You have to read it. One other thing that I didn't love about the book is it was very spicy. I like spicy books, but I felt like their like intimate time was a little like too discussed, which made the book longer. And I just wish it was a little bit shorter and like cut out some of that because it was very like repetitive, like sort of the same thing happening. So I just wish that would have happened and then I would have given it a little bit of a higher score too. My book favorite of the month is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I know this book is like critically acclaimed and I was really excited to read it. It became available at the library and it is a journey. So if you're unfamiliar with the premise, it's about two best friends, Sam and Sadie, and they are both video game engineers, I guess to simplify it. And so they meet when they're 12 playing video games in the hospital. I don't want to give like too much away, but Sam is in the hospital. Sadie is there because her sister's in the hospital. And they just start playing video games together because Sam basically lives there for some time. Um, and then they like go their own separate ways. They have a falling out essentially. And then they see each other in Boston years later when they're in college. He is going to Harvard and she is going to MIT. And she basically has him play a video game that she created for class and he loves it and they basically decide to team up and get this video game on the market. So the book spans, I've looked it up, it spans 30 years basically over their career as video game architects, designers. They eventually start their own company, like spoiler alert, they become super successful. Um, but it just, I thought that it would be more of a linear journey 
and the book jumps around a lot. It jumps around from when they were kids, from when Sam and his mom were in Los Angeles growing up, even before he meets Sadie, and his mom passes away. So she's in the book a lot, but just when he is like 10 years old, so much earlier. And then you also kind of see some of Sadie's background, um, and you also kind of see their lives separate when they're not on good terms. So overall, it's like you have to be paying attention. It's one of those books that I've read even slower than most because if you don't pay attention, you're going to miss like the jump between the timelines. Um, and they also have a third partner at their company, Marks, who is a major player in the game, the game, the game, in the company. Um, but he's more like the business side of things and something really tragic happens to him. So I will say that there's lots of tragedy in this book and trigger warning for suicide, gun violence, and domestic violence. So just putting that out there, I'm sure there's a trigger warning on Goodreads. I didn't see it and I, um, you know, still would have read it, but I guess it would have been good to know. I, sh I should have been better at like looking for that. But there is some like really sad moments in this book, but also really compelling and overall when I was finished with the book, I was left with like, oh wow, like what a journey that these two went on. Like just at the end, I was feeling like their love is friends and like platonic love like that is so special and they found it so young and it just made me, the book made me happy even though there were a lot of sad moments. So again, I don't want to give too much away because there are lots of different storylines going on, but just read it because I feel like it's, you know, it's popular for a reason and I gave it 5 out of 5 even though it did have those like really dark moments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know what you've been loving down below.